and he didn't really, he's like, well, well what do I, I'm like, I'm, I suck it and I get gain power. He's like, well, what about me? I'm like, okay. and they're like, and roll sound. I'm like, you're like dying, but it's sexual. You're into it, but you're dying. Okay. Ready, go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome again, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the hidden world of the Fae, beneath our own with a cast of Lost Girl. So without further ado, let's go on down to Bo's detective agency and see who we find. Our first guest is an actress whose body of work includes Two and a Half Men, Supernatural, and Painkiller Jane. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Ivani Florette Marquise, better known by her title as The Morgan. Please welcome Emmanuel Vache. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank oh. you. Everything is well in your corner of the world? It is. Dogs are happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. Oh, dogs, plural. So you showed us one earlier. You have multiples? I have multiples. I have two dogs. Um, oh. One is behaving and sleeping nicely. The other one just jumped off my lap and we'll see to be determined whether she continues behaving. <laughs> All right. Very well. We, uh, we, uh, we were always, we were always welcome for a fifth panelist. If she would care to join us. All right. She might. <laughs> <laughs> very well. Well, Manuel, thank you so much for joining us here today. Absolutely. And next, he is an actor and songwriter whose credits include Tin Man, Sanctuary, and Killjoys. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of the Blood King, Fitzpatrick Trick Morgan. Please welcome Rick Holland. Hello. Hello. Uh, how's tricks? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're very good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uncle used to say that one. Hey, how's tricks? I was like, oh, okay, I guess. So, yeah. Rick, how are you? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Everything, everything is good in your corner of the world? Everything is pretty good in the corner of my world. Sunny, right. shiny. Hey, good, good is the new awesome in these crazy times we're living in right now. Yeah. <laughs> so doing. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next, she is an actress whose roles include Orphan Black, Project Blue Book, and Turn Washington Spies. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of roguish Henzi Malikov. Please welcome Ksenia Solo. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I am well in my part of Florida. How are, and uh, glad to see things are going well for you in your corner of the world. I mean, look who I'm with. Things can't be better. Really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yes, they can be better and they can be better with our next guest because she's an actress whose body of work includes Assassin's Tale, Winona Earp and Blood and Treasure. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of our favorite subcutist, Bo Dennis. Please welcome Anna Silk. Hello! Hey! Yay. I'm, so, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, we are so excited to have you all here. Welcome to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. We are so glad you could all join us here today. Our team is right now going through the chat room, pulling out the questions for you. In the meantime, first of all, thank you all for, for being a part of this series. Uh, it, really, it, it really caught me by surprise when it came out, and I've really come to adore it. Uh, and I... I, I thank you. I thank you for your talents. I thank you for your professionalism. I thank you for the performances you brought to these characters because it, it was a wild ride. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Thank thank you. Very much. Thank absolutely. You. Absolutely. So I'd like to just throw this out. Uh, being an effects show and high concept and everything else, there's a, a lot of challenges that uh, you'd get on this as opposed to a normal show. So what was the wildest or craziest day that uh, you may have experienced on the set? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, effects wise, sucking someone's chi until you know what that looks like on camera <laughs> is just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> because you also have to trust that it's going to look kind of cool. And then once I saw the blue effect, I was like, okay, this. I can do this. I can. This it must have felt so bizarre, like especially the like a total creep episode. <laughs> yeah. Like what it was? Like, it was. Oh, so is he gonna disappear? Is he gonna show? What's yeah, going or am I just gonna be like <laughs> leaning into people, making this weird breathing sound? Um, I gotta say, you made it look pretty good, and uh, well, thank you. Without many people could do that, so <laughs> thank you. But yeah, that was probably the weirdest like effects thing I think that I that I did all the time. Although you Anna, know? that Sorry. that. That sword thing that we had, that was the glove that you put oh, on gosh. in that very first episode we did. Yes. And they they were gonna do this thing like, oh. I thought I thought that 
from that point on, there would, all the weapons would be this like CGI stuff. So we, she'd put on this glove and the, you know, the director's like, okay, now, you know, it's going to grow out of her fist. So kind of like watch it go up. So the two of us are like, at the same time, yeah. You know, watching it go up and then you see it on <laughs> in the episode and it's like, and we're like, <laughs> and it just, I think at that point they were like, okay, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, it was expensive and it didn't really work. So, but uh, that was my, you know, the one special effect, the weapon sure. thing that they did that they're like, mm. yeah. I remember like our lovely stunt people in green suits. I'm blanking on the episode, but when you have to be like really scared of something and there's someone in a green <laughs> leotard in front of you, <laughs> hands down, my favorite. That's that's a real like acting test when you can make it through that. Tennis ball, okay, but like the green leotard. <laughs> the green leotard is just asking for like the giggles. It and, is. Yeah. And taking yeah. 10 times longer to shoot it because of it. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, this is, this is so crazy and like looks ridiculous. Totally. <laughs> I don't think I had like any sort of crazy, weird special effects other than, you know, doing this sort of stuff. And <laughs> I don't like nothing. Uh, when we had, you had to suck my chi. Um, <laughs> Anna, we with had, with pleasure, with pleasure. Because <laughs> we were like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to take that seriously until you see it on screen. You're right; like it looks good, it, like, and you sell it. But like, man, oh man, that's a that's a tough one to pull. Off. Well, I just remember in the first episode we had a guest star that I was sucking his chi, and at, at this point I thought about it a little bit more. And he didn't really, he's like, well, well what do I, I'm like, I'm, I suck it and I get, gain power. He's like, well, what about me? I'm like, okay. and they're like, and roll sound. I'm like, you're like dying, but it's sexual. You're into it, but you're dying. Okay, ready for it. To watch him process that is like, uh, oh, you know, it was kind of, you're like, perfect. That was it. That's right. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I usually prefer my notes to be a little more together. <laughs> but that was part of the fun of the show because we just kind of, you know, we you have to move quickly because you've got a big lot of, lot of stuff to cover and big stories to tell. So we had to just kind of go like, what, what? Okay, go. All right, let's just do this and and see. And you raise a good point. Uh, again, I, I've always felt that that actors that work, especially in special effects series, between the, the the scrunch of the schedule and yeah, the green leotard, the green suits, and the tennis balls and everything else, nobody gets ever gets enough credit for having to work against that stuff. Exactly, just say sell it, and. Yeah, and again, kudos to all of you to, to being able to muscle through all that because that is just something that you don't get trained for that. That is something you only experience when you're actually there at the set and really getting it the first time. They don't cover well, that. I think, that I think you get training between the ages of zero and five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I don't think there's, there, there's ever been an acting school or class that brings out the tennis ball on a stick with like a little happy face on it and be like, okay, no. so this is your scene partner for today. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you're doing. This is and they're very doing. angry. <laughs> yeah. no, and, but I feel like kids just jump into it. I had to tell my younger son that because his his school had to shut down for a couple of days last week because of COVID. Uh, he's fine, by the way. But I was like, you know, your your school had to shut down. And he's like, it's been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> like he's right there. And I was like, no, no, it hasn't been destroyed. <laughs> but that's where his imagination, he just jumps in. So I think we learned that when we're young. Oh my God. <laughs> it's been oh. destroyed? Come, come, come. That's it's incredible. Gone. Forever? <laughs> Forever? <laughs> Well, maybe so. Oh, we are good to go on our audience questions. So thank you for indulging mine. And let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Lynn, who would like to know if you could have any abilities or powers from Lost Girl, what would you choose? Hmm. Oh, gosh. I would switch places with Rick. I mean, it'd be pretty awesome to be able to control things the way he did when he chose to. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I had enough protein to remove the blood <laughs> out of my body to <laughs> survive. The... Thanks, you were good to go. You wanna make small notes, not like long, you know, when you're writing in your blood. 
<laughs> you don't want to be too <laughs> pedantic. <laughs> you want to get right to the point. But I digress. A unicorn. <laughs> yes. Yes, a unicorn. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I would say, uh, uh, I guess uh, the mesmer thing, the whole like kind of being able to control the person. It's like, yes, I get the part. <laughs> yes, you get the part. <laughs> yes, we do have a table available this way. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. Yes. laughs> I think, I mean, I the, the, the very vain side of me wants to stick with succubus because we stop aging at the time that we're most alluring. <laughs> so I would definitely go for that at this point. But um but I don't know. I, I like Chris's wolf was so powerful. You know? Just him, just watching him wolf out just was so cool. I'd want to wolf out. Fair. I think I have to agree with that. The the wolf, that's pretty cool. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah. But then the succubus, yes, to stop aging at a certain, like at your peak, at your prime. Like, and I look the best I've ever looked in that. I'm 130. Forever yeah. and ever and ever. <laughs> there, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an easy choice. But Lynn, thank you. Great question to start you, us off Lynn. with. Uh, here's one from Callie. What would be your character's theme song? Ooh. The Your Cheers, favorite. the Cheers theme song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great choice. How? Oh, oh hard gosh. Character theme song. Character theme song. Um, I the tiger. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because the Morgan rises up. <laughs> That's a great one. Huh. I don't know. I need Callie. I need a time on this. Ooh, no. Oh. Sexual healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. That's there. A good Thank you, Ksenia. You're there welcome. it is. Now, please yeah. give me mine. Okay. Um, oh gosh. Uh, she's right? bad. She's a bad mamma jamma. Love it. <laughs> or I will survive. <laughs> yes, I will yeah, survive. <laughs> but was she ever af afraid? Was she petrified? I mean, <laughs> not with Bo beside her, by her side. <laughs> But then, she, no, I'm <laughs> uh, there you go, Callie. Wonderful question. Thank you so much. Uh, here's one from Vanessa. Who wants to know what were your first impressions of your characters? That's a great question. Oh. I guess first impressions would be when you sat down. Okay, you got the part. This is kind of what the character is and where we're going. Yeah, even from the uh, from the audition for me, um, you know, the sides that I got were uh, opposite Emmanuel, uh, oh, wow. and uh, so it was all about being the king and uh, and and the power of 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 trick, well, post king, but still the power of trick and good against evil, and so uh, that was my first impression of it and taking away from it, and then to find out after getting the part about being the grandfather <laughs> it was like oh okay so i'm not i'm also to the to this oh <laughs> so which you know it was in my wheelhouse so that's fine yeah it was all, it was all fun cool uh my first impression was like wow this is gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> this is gonna you know I, I i'm gonna get to be larger than life and kind of get to play and um and sort of break the boundaries of of you know the conventional kind of like villain uh mold which was you know like it i think that was one of the greatest things about um lost girl in the way uh it, every, the approach to all the characters like we kind of had a lot of freedom to do what we wanted and it was embraced and that was that was a like a big luxury and like a, a gift. So I think that's that was uh, my first impression, and then off, uh, my first impression after like doing the initial episodes. You were so amazing, Emmanuel. Like just just your take on the character. Um, it was so unexpected and just surprising. Like around every corner, I think you you surprised us all in it. I think no, I just rolled out of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure what that says about me. <laughs> no, but it did. I, I actually recently um, helped a friend here teach a class, like an online class, and I, uh -huh. it was a sci-fi night, and I brought in all the scenes, uh, all scenes from Lost Girl. 
And one of the ones I brought in for the for the Morgan actually was like the the first scene that Bo and the Morgan had together, where she basically and it was it's a very heavy Morgan scene where she basically has to explain the, the world of the Fae to Bo. It's oh, so okay. well written because it's so it's it's about that explanation, obviously with the audience needs, but it's so character based and Bo's just kind of like, huh? <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> it was crazy. I don't know, my, my first impressions were actually very different than, like, I know Bo is seen as strong and sexual and all of those things, and that might be true, but my impression of her was actually extremely vulnerable and extremely broken. So I just didn't see her any other way. And so just so, uh, so so searching for something and, and with so much shame, this sounds so negative, but that was my first oh. impression. And that's how I, that's how I, that was my take of the character, which I think might be part of the reason I got the job. I don't know, but that 100%, was- 100%, you, br you brought in, you brought in a heart and vulnerability, whereas maybe, you know, anyone else reading it off the page would play it, you know, maybe a specific way with without, all of that like inner world of, of, of someone who's, who's searching for, for something, you know, someone yeah. who feels broken. And, and that's why you were Bo because you, you saw her that way. And I can't, I can't imagine her not being that the whole show was based around your heart, you know? So. Thank you. Yeah. And you brought such Thank like you. a relatability and like a, a likability that character. And I think Senya is absolutely right that off the page, I think the tendency might be to play her, you know, like she's tough and she's, you know, a badass and all this stuff, but you brought this amazing vulnerability to her and this likability and relatability, yeah. which was, uh, you know, was the show. Oh, well, thank you. But that is, but that, yeah. thank you guys. And I bet that is how I saw her. I didn't see also like, if you say like be overtly sexual, I'll be like, yikes, then run away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but to base it in, in the truth of that world, it was not hard because then it had a story and she had something she was searching for and she was so powerful that, you know, um, and I got to grow from day one to day the end um, to, you know, harness that, source of shame became her source of power. And so that's what was so cool for me. And very cool for us to watch. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I, I would say um, I thought Kenzie was like really, really uh, tough. Um, and also the, my biggest impression from the beginning of the show was just being so terrified of the comedy aspect of it. I thought they had made a huge mistake in casting me because I'd never done anything comedic before. And I thought I was terribly like not funny. And I thought they were going to fire me like a hundred percent. So that's when I think of like my first impression, it's just mostly soaked in a lot of fear. <laughs> oh my God, how am I going to do this? But I honestly, I, I, I feel like Kenzie taught me so much and her humor really changed uh, me as a person. I, I still feel like I she's with me and she really helped infuse my personality with with more um, with more humor. And thank God, because otherwise I would just be a very depressing person. <laughs> well, we don't want well, and it was it worked so well because then yeah I mean I think I remember those fears. I love I'd love to see bubbles over our head on our first day. <laughs> I'm not funny, but I'm not sexual. I, or, or sexy. I'm sexual. I'm sexual. I'm not, I didn't think I was we sexy. You. We believe you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it was uh, that dynamic and that humor. It just, it it was the, the uh, I don't know. It was just so, it was so wonderful to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think my, that. sorry, not to keep going on about this, but I think my, biggest memory from the pilot is the scene with you and I in the diner. I think yes. that like really set the tone moving forward. And I think once we had shot that scene, I, I maybe, I felt like, Oh, okay. Like maybe eventually like I will, I will feel like more comfortable in this, but that scene just really like set the tone. I yeah. think in it's one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Uh, Vanessa, thank you very much. That was a great question. 
And here's one for Brianna who wants to know who is your favorite, or I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase this, who was one of your favorite guest stars? Mm. Gosh. There's so there's a lot. There's, there's so, so many, many. Yeah. 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 Because a yeah. lot of a lot of the people were like friends, you know, mm. you do theater in, in the city and stuff like that over your career, and you 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 end up meeting a lot of people. And so, you know, that whole section, the season two with the Garuda, there was uh, uh Marty who played the rat guy who kept stealing my books and like eating the books and stuff wow. in my lair. And like we had done, he and I had done Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe together at Young People's Theater in Toronto. And I played Mr. Tumnus, and he was the leader of the Wolf Army. And so he attacked me and like threw me around the stage. And and uh, so the roles were reversed. That's um, so bad. <laughs> there was Hardy Lyman, and then there was, uh, it was just, there was so many. But um, I mean, uh, and Michael, who did the Body Switcher episode. Mm, yes. Michael Cram, he's he's still a good friend, so we still actually stay in touch. So I guess we I, so I guess I should say him. So many, so many good guest stars. Yeah, Aaron Ashmore was amazing. Uh, Michael Mando, who played remember Anna, he played like Kenzie's friend, like from her old yes. life. Yeah, he's the one. Yeah, he was fantastic. Um, Anthony Lemke. He brought a whole new yeah. dynamic, and I, there was two. There were so many. I just like the guest stars always showed up so prepared and so ready to just jump in. You know, we needed them. We needed them because they're, oh, yeah. they're the people that are sort of there daily doing it. You need this fresh energy coming in with new ideas, and um, they, they, everyone just showed up so perfectly. I. Yeah. I you know, it was cool to work with Linda Hamilton, obviously. Was, she brings a different level of experience just in terms of the scope of her career. And um, I don't know. Yeah, Linda, Ham that, I, I would have to say Linda Hamilton, not just because of, um, you know, uh, her work on the show. And I mean, like like you said, everybody brought so much to that show. Yeah. Um, but just being able to talk to her and just obviously like her life experience and her, like I remember just having a conversation with her outside the hotel and I was just like, wow. It was just, she was just so cool. She was just so down to earth and, you know, like had so much sort of wisdom that yeah. um, just on life, it wasn't even about career. It was just like, I think we we're having like relationship yeah. talks. <laughs> it was yeah, just yeah. like just stuff. And it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. She was lovely. I met her very briefly once over lunch and she was very complimentary to me and it was just, it was like, Lyndall Hamilton's <laughs> telling me I'm good at something? That's pretty awesome. That's really um, awesome. The guy who played the Garuda, uh, do you remember his first name? Oh, my God. Drug, Drug, Drug. I found him, but he was amazing. He was amazing. It's so hard to answer this question because, as you said, Anna, we were, yeah, everybody just came, like, with their A game. It's it's so hard to single out people because there was- It is, and it's hard to guest on a show because you're walking into an energy you're not familiar with. You're, you know, um, uh, you might not know every detail of the show. You probably and usually don't, actually. And um, But people just really played. Uh, the actor was uh, Raul uh, Trujillo. Yeah, Raul. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Thank After you. he he went he did it he did the the one episode with me and then he went away and he came back at the very end and he had gotten a tattoo of the Garuda from oh, wow. the top of his rib cage to the to the like to the top of his knee all the way down his and he was really happy to show everyone it <laughs> but uh, but he wow. had a he had a full on tattoo of his character on his body because well, I, I actually have a tattoo it. of Raul actually <laughs> <laughs> it starts here and goes all the way down just kidding. Yeah, but I, I have, have Ebony Florette <laughs> tattooed on my ass, but you know, I'm not going to show that to you guys. Yeah, maybe, maybe after. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Once the wine comes out, we want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Brianna, wonderful question. Thank you so much. And I see the pooch has kind of joined us. Yeah, she's. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 And here's one from Kay. Kay wants to know what was everyone's favorite costume or outfit? Oh, gosh. Ooh. Hmm. 
that is rough. <laughs> well, for you especially. I mean, the costuming yeah. is so cool, right? We had the coolest clothes. We did. Yeah. God, we were lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, favorite? Uh, it was really nice to be able to walk in and like put on clothes that like fit me perfectly every day. Yeah. I mean, it was it was almost it was always a shirt, a tie, and a vest. Vest. But <laughs> but the color schemes changed, and uh, yeah, and having the sleeves all rolled up by by Josie every day. Yeah. I miss I miss that still. I, I can't know. get dressed on my own anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like Josie. Josie, where are you, Josie? I need you. Oh, uh, we were so spoiled in that regard. Yeah. They really had a knack for finding the most amazing pieces and making them even better. Like they would just tweak things and and everything just fit beautifully. Like they just they were so talented. And yeah, I like I don't know what to like every like it was one the one one of the few shows that I've been on I was like, okay, I like pretty much everything that I've put on. I would this is fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think I don't know it was if I have the a favorite outfit. Yeah, the, the wardrobe was like its own character on the show. Oh, it totally was. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like for Bo, she, I mean, she had to be ready for bed or a big fight. So like, <laughs> <she had> to, <laughs> the, you know, there was a lot of like wide shouldered things, bust line, small waist, flares out a bit, tight pants, boots. I mean, that's like, that's what I think of when I think of Bo. Um, I think, and I liked all of it. Um, the purple coat I wore in the premiere, I think it was season three. It was like, it was like light purple. Mm -hmm. And it, the first time I felt that Bo had moved into a bit of high fashion, which was kind of cool because the way it moved, I remember walking down an alley and it was like swaying beside me. It felt really like, like fey haute couture, <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> which was kind of cool. Fair. So uh, out of curiosity, was anybody allowed to take any wardrobe home? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 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 I, I don't think I'm cool enough to wear these things in real life, but <laughs> yeah, I, I live in, in Southern California, so it's hard to dress in tight black clothing, <laughs> but um, uh, maybe if I ever go East coast, you'll, I'll, you'll see me walking around like, bulbs. I'll be like yeah, I can wear this. Um, no, I have a lot of, I have like some of her pieces, like a purple vest. She wore a lot, this leather purple vest. I have her dagger. Um, nice. You know, I have some cool things. Very nice, very nice. This is Kay. a tricks. This is tricks vest, by the way. There you go. Okay. okay, all right. Nice, <coughs> nice. awesome. Kay, thank you. Wonderful question. And here's one from Found Girl. Uh, is Rick bringing the vest back into style? I would say yes. hundred yeah. percent. Today, bad. I would. I would argue that the vest never went out of style. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. amongst bass players and keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> and from Amy, oh, who uh, uh, broke uh, character, or maybe had the giggles the most on set? The giggles are like weeping. Not broke down. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. <laughs> yeah who, 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 who broke character the most on the set? <sighs> Chris Holden Reed. I feel like we were all pretty good except that one episode do you guys remember uh, where they lined us up because we think we couldn't yeah. get all the lines out so they just put us in a big line and we all had to say them because we couldn't look at each other <laughs> was terrible. that was that i don't the, think i was there for that no maybe not i remember we had like a night shoot and chris, was chris like naked and we were in like some dingy i don't know i just remember that we couldn't stop laughing remember and they were starting to get like really I mad agree. at us I know. <laughs> like really mad at us like not even like guys stop but it was like we need to get this done stop <laughs> laughing God, and then I, and you can't you literally can't stop laughing i think chris holden reed, i mean chris holden reed played the most pranks i would say than broke i i laughed yeah. a lot with zoe because zoe and i i mean zoe's humor is so cutting and quick and she would, they'd be like, we're all sound. She'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, cause she just, and then she, but she could stop and I couldn't. So then I looked like the jerk, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think we all laughed. I do remember once breaking though in tears because it had just been such a long season <laughs> and, um, and I was trying to do a scene, but 
right before they rolled, I was getting emotional. And I remember I was like, I'm going to do this. And I came in like, all right. So, you know, like, and I just couldn't. I was like, I'm so sorry, you guys. And I did not have to stop. And Linda was like, oh, I'm a makeup artist. Did you redo my makeup? <laughs> oh, this again, Anna. It happens. Oh. It happens. No, but we laughed. I mean, we laughed a lot. Yeah. We laughed yeah, Casey, lot. Casey Collins, I made him break yeah. once just. I had to draw a circle on the floor, <laughs> the body switch, switching episode. And I was, I was like, I was determined. I'm always, I was always determined to do my own, like even like the hand insert stuff. It's like, no, it's gotta be my hands. Yeah. I gotta flip the book. I gotta crack the egg. I gotta hold the little pendulum over the map. And, uh, and then there's this, but I had to draw a circle. And so oh my God, I get I down there <laughs> with the chalk and I'm, and the art art department had had written this like beautiful long giant circle that everyone's supposed to get inside. And so I'm just finishing the last little bit of it, and I'm I'm like determined to make it perfectly circular as well. And I'm I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. In case he just bursts out laughing, and I look down and I basically draw draw a straight line between the one point to the other point, so that the circle had this like flat spot on it. And they're like, okay, I you know what? We're day. just we're gonna just finish that, Rick, and you can just. <laughs> but Casey laughed. He laughed for a good good while at that, and then everyone <laughs> laughed because he was. I think laughing. even when he left the set, he was still laughing. I think yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I killed him. I killed him that day. You killed him. You broke him. <laughs> I broke him that day for sure. And let's go ahead and roll another one. And here's one from Jones Drew. What is a dream role each of you aspire to? Wow, good question. Hmm. hmm. I'd love to play Catwoman. Oh wow. Ooh. That would be fun. Would be I, so I could fun. I could see that. Yeah. You make a good catwoman. Yeah, you wow. <laughs> Just Is like that. that. I did? I've been preparing. <laughs> that, was good. that was good. No, you'd be great, Catwoman. I don't know. I'd love to do like a James Bond movie, but like a female bond. Ooh. Like yeah, I guess sort of a Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of deal would be fun, but like along those lines, like a super like actiony, fun spy thing. Well, <laughs> there, there's, there's no, there are more double O's. It's not just double O seven. I've said for years, there's no reason not to have double O three as a female agent and a separate franchise of her adventures. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think that would be super fun and cool. That, that would be that would be amazing. You would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Batman yeah. vein, just because I thought and just you'd mentioned Catgirl, so I was thinking I've always wanted to play the Penguin since Danny DeVito played him. I thought I could, oh, I could do that role. I want to do that cool. guy. And then they gave it to Colin Farrell. I mean, what the heck is that? I mean, for the next one. So, <sighs> well, that's an interesting choice. They, they'll be another, and they'll be another, and they'll be another. <laughs> Yeah, that's they true. Will keep that, that, that one day, no. the, ne the next Batman project is never the last Batman project. That's I think true. We've all figured that out now. So I I tend to want to do roles of whatever I'm watching currently. So, uh, um, I, and I'm way behind in TV, by the way. So I've been watching a lot of The Americans, which I really like. Oh, I love that it. it's set in the eighties. Oh, it's yeah, amazing. Gary Russell. I just think it's a great role and a great so show. Fun. And it's she's so strong, but she's so subtle, and I just think she's so good. Um, so yeah, That's I'm also watching good. Physical, also set in the eighties. So physical. good. What's that? Right? So oh good. my god, it it's uh, Rose Burns. Physical, like let's get physical. Yeah, it's, it's so um, amazing. You I love intense. Rose Burns. It's intense, but it's so yes. good, and I love. I mean, I I think we should all start wearing bodysuits again. <laughs> <laughs> Rick bought back the vest and then collected yeah. we could bring back the leg warmers. <laughs> the vest is definitely 80s, so. Yeah. Uh, nice. I'm there. I'm already there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jones, fun question. Thank you so much. And from Christy, what other fandom would you like to see crossover with Lost Girl? Oh and gosh. this could be fictional fandom, the New York Mets, World of Shakespeare, any sort of a crazy <laughs> mashup. You know? Oh. Um... Stranger Things, I think, would be a cool crossover. That's good. Cool. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's hard not to think Buffy right away. I right. Buffy and Bo teaming up, doing that. Oh, that would that'd be, be cool. cool. Um, but but yeah, if I think of a different type of show, I don't know. Yeah, it's a hard <laughs> one. 
I always thought Doctor Who could easily pop up into into Lost World for a, a, a quick adventure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'd love to see something like completely opposite. Opposite, yeah. Like, can we go like into um, the Crown? <laughs> sure. <laughs> something like completely that wouldn't make sense. But can you imagine all of us just like strolling in, in? in the, Yes. Oh my gosh. Queen Elizabeth like, walks into the now. walks into the Del Riata. <laughs> and Bo starts sucking her cheek. I mean, it could work. <laughs> we are not amused. <laughs> I'm a light fay. <laughs> oh, Rick, who'd you like to see a, a mashup with? Oh, I honestly can't think of anything. Um <clears throat> I right, will say Batman then, and then you can play the penguin. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look like you're about to say something. Would you have an idea? Did Do you I know? The... Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. No worries. No worries. Christy, thank you. Fun question. Yeah. What do we have next? Here's one from Steve. Ooh. What did you want to be growing up? Hmm. Well, don't. I suppose the first thing I wanted to be was a doctor. Uh, oh. but then, uh, then I didn't become a doctor. And you uh, thought it'd be better to play one on TV. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what, that's the role I want to play. My dream role is to play a doctor. Um, yeah, no, I, I, and then in grade 11, I took an acting class and it was like, it was all over. I mean, I did all sorts of things in the first part of high school and then, you know, everything, uh, and then, uh, computer science and woodworking and auto mechanics and, Wow. And then, uh, and then, then it was like, I did an acting drama class cause I needed an art credit <laughs> and then it was like, Oh, Oh, this is it. This is where I should be. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, think I wanted to be a veterinarian and then I realized I was not good with blood or needles or um, <laughs> watching animals suffer. So even yeah. though it meant that I could help them. So, then I kind of went with like that it, very early. I was like in, in second grade in a school play and I was like, oh, this is amazing. I love this. And same thing. I was like, this is where I belong. And then it, the, the journey began much to my parents' dismay. <laughs> they were like, oh God, can't you just go to school and get a real job? <laughs> like this is a real job. This is a real you, job. You yeah. could do acting on the side. Yeah, that was, yeah. It's like, you can, you know, go to, go to, you know, law school or whatever and and vet or vet school or become a nurse my mom was a nurse so she wanted me to be a nurse and she's like you can do that and then you can do acting on the side i'm like yeah no i don't believe in plan b <laughs> yeah yeah sis you gotta go all in yeah <laughs> i think i mean for me when i was I, I just wanted to be liked so i think that's why i became an actor <laughs> <laughs> But I also, I grew up watching people on stage all the time. My mom's an acting teacher and a theater director. And so like, I just watched, I sat in the audience of every rehearsal, always thinking, gosh, people who do this are so lucky. I wish I, you know, I would love to do this. It's just not, that's not what I will do. Is I never saw it as something that I could possibly do until I did. And then I went, oh no, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into this as well. Um, so I kind of started later than most people. Hmm. Fair. Took me a while I, to unpack that whole being liked. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> it took a minute. Took a minute, but I got there. Just a second. Yeah. I think. I think from the time I was like out of the womb, I think I knew. I also come from an artistic family, and also grew up like watching the theater and being backstage. And I think I had my first role when I was like four. All I had to do was come out on stage and like either pick up a cake or put down a cake. And I think I got like a standing ovation and I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My, my first stage role, I had to come out and pick up a carrot. Really? Yeah, it was an item of food. That's so Look at that. Yeah. That's how you start, folks. If you're, if you're interested <laughs> in starting in the, in the acting biz. That your desperate need for approval. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. I, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, please like me. Please like me. Please like me. <laughs> also, nom 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 nom. 
<laughs> oh wait, wait. I'll I'll pick up the carrot again. Give, give me the other yeah. Yeah. I can do it better. I I I I I, I got the green side out. I'll do the green side up. I, it's like a flower here. <laughs> uh, Steve, thank you. A very fun question. I think we have time for one more. Let's see, we got a really fun one from Anne, who wants to know: Do you have a line from the show that stands out to you still to this day? Oh, great question. <sighs> I mean, regret is for suckers, for suckers, for suckers. Regret yeah. is for suckers, bitch. What just happened to my computer? That'll do it. That'll, That'll do it. it. Rick says are already. What? Yeah. Yes. Scissor scissor already. already. Yeah. I think that one was pretty epic for me. I, I don't think I'll ever forget that one. <laughs> that was an epic one. <laughs> I, I I don't know. What? There's too many. I know. Too many. Like, I mean, a million. You well, you could, you could, you could pull it out into like a scene. Maybe it's a, a memorable scene as opposed to a memorable line. I mean, I love the whole scene with Bo with her real mom. Uh, sort of, it was her sort of coming out moment of admitting who and what she was and finding power in it. I mean, that was a pretty powerful scene. And the actress that played my mom was so lovely. Um, I remember that. I remember Trip dying. Hmm. Mm. That was a drag. <laughs> that was a drag. <laughs> but, um, but powerful. I mean, I, I there's so many. There's so many. Yeah, I guess uh, for yeah. me it was uh, uh, Who Let the Troll Out? It became a, <laughs> it became a, it became a t-shirt. <laughs> I think Steve DeMarco directed that episode, and he's like, "Yeah, come out with the bat and like, who let the trolls? Who let my troll out?" <laughs> Love it. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Anne. Fun question, and this has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, any final words for our audience before we take our leave? Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you for joining us, and this is so cool that we get to do this, and you know, um, certainly people. There are some people that couldn't ever come to a con for whatever reason. So this is a really cool way to connect with people. And certainly now. And everybody stay safe. Yeah. My words. Stay safe. We, lo we love our fans. You guys are the best. The best. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It has been my absolute pleasure to have you all here today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you for all those wonderful questions. We'll hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember that smiles are free. Spend them often. <laughs> yeah.